John Ackleson for Boating New Zealand magazine. Today we're on a Fontaine Peugeot 40MY. It's the first one in New Zealand. This boat is part of the ownership fleet, so it's a fractional uh, ownership scheme whereby you can own part of this boat. So far three quarters of the boat are sold, there's still one share left, but uh, look, we'll take a look around this boat and I can't see it lasting very long at all. So this is a 40 foot boat, but it's actually, it's, it's a vast space on here. This, this is a massive cockpit, uh, wide of course, rather than deep, but, uh, but still deep enough. We've got this great big settee across the transom here. Um, the table's removable, nice teak work, uh, teak decks all round, and it's completely covered, so you're completely out of the sun. They've also got a, a, an electric uh, sunscreen, which can uh, stop the glare on a really bright day. And of course, there are clears that you can put on for a winter's day to keep it all nice and cozy in here. Really good access down onto the platform. The platform's hydraulic. Uh, they can also, uh, as they have in this case, keep the, um, keep the tender on the platform. Uh, ownership has also supplied a couple of bait boards, because this is a New Zealand boat after all, and we've got bait boards either side. But really good access, nice and practical, great place to swim from, great, nice and easy to launch the tender as well with the platform down. Massive side deck as well. So this four deck, it's big enough to play tennis, it really is huge, vast. Um, look, they've set it up with the cushions here, the, they've got adjustable backrests, you know, it's a really nice place to sort of lounge around. Drink holders everywhere in this boat, but down here in, in the well, uh, there's a huge hatch cover and underneath there is a massive uh, storage space. It's big enough not only for these cushions and, and the fenders and all that kind of stuff, but there's room, I don't know, there's room to have a party in there. It really is very, very large. Uh, in, this, in the next model up, the, the MY44, uh, that actually becomes another cabin, so that gives you an idea of the amount of space that's actually in there. So there's a whole lot happening up top here on the flybridge. Now this is all open at the moment, but you can of course order this with, with clears if you like, if you want to enclose it. The, the, the owners that have taken this boat don't really want those clears, they like the wind in their face. And since you've got the ability to drive from downstairs anyway, that's not really going to be a problem. Now as an entertaining space, well as you can see it's, it's pretty big, great big table here. We've got some quite cool little lights here, little lights there for social times, a nice, nice wee feature. Um, somewhere to sit obviously, and, and this galley is, a, is another uh, feature that this particular boat has, it's, it's one of the options from the factory, there's a Kenyan electric grill on there, there's a, there's a fridge to keep your drinks cold, of course there's a sink. Now this is a European boat and they do like their sun lounging, so here's somewhere else that you can lie about in the sun if you wish, uh, although this also converts into um, seating with uh, a forward facing seat at the front and another one. Uh, behind it. So depending on the weather or how you feel on the day, this is probably going to be the helm station that you use. Um, fully functional, it's fully featured just like the downstairs helm station. We've got the 15 inch Garmin display here, Volvo Penta, um, electronic instruments for the, for the engines, and of course the, the full suite of electronic controls including the joystick control for the IPS. This vessel's got a pair of uh, Volvo IPS 500s, it gets along very nicely, in fact it, it tops out at about 22, 23 knots and cruises very comfortably at 20 knots. And at that speed I have to say it is a very smooth ride indeed. In fact one of the things that strikes you with a, with a catamaran like this, particularly one that has got as much beam as this one, is just how stable it is uh, in a seaway but also at rest as we are now. Things just don't move about, that means you can put a bottle of wine on the table and just let it sit there, it's not going to roll off with every wave. Again if you want even more sun, we've got a great big sunroof up here, opens the hole whole thing up on the hard top. So large and stylish galley, nice white cabinets up here. Um, we've got an awful lot of storage space in this boat but this galley as well is, is really well endowed with storage. And of course one of the things that, that ownership does is they make sure that these boats are completely fully equipped so that people can go out at any time. Don't have to bring all their own stuff, just a bit of food and drink of course. Modern appliances, all Bosch. We've got a stone countertop, uh, electric hobs, uh, two burners on this one. And we've also got a dishwasher and a full size Bosch refrigerator across the way here. So moving forward. Um, it really, really takes advantage of the amount of space that we've got in here. And even though this has got really wide side decks, I mean, it's a really wide walkway around both sides, you've still got a mess of area here in the saloon. And this is something that you, 
you know you just simply can't get in a mono hull so that's one of the advantages of a of a catamaran it just gives you all of this space now this is set up uh, very socially we've got a, a nice settee here uh, one of the the end seats can be moved around if you want to do that very clever uh, coffee table come dining table here uh, it folds out and it goes up and down electrically as well but the space works pretty well it's, it's social as well for the for the helmsman if he's sitting here at the at the helm people can be down here with him and or her and, and enjoy the uh, uh, enjoy the ambience of the of the saloon plenty of light um, lots of glass surrounding you and the, the the vision from the helm is of course superb there's also sliding side windows for a bit of ventilation and of course the, the rear doors open all the way up, they're, um, they're bifold doors. So the helm is, uh, is quite simply laid out, there's not too much happening on here and that's probably a good thing if, if we've got lots of owners for this boat, it's, uh, that's probably a good thing. Single 15-inch uh, Garmin uh, multifunction display, of course all the engine um, data can be run through that as well, although we do also have the Volvo um, LED display here that, that comes with the, with the IPS setup. Um, electronic controls, joystick control, VHF radio, and of course there's a Garmin autopilot as well. Everything's close to hand, nice and easy, and look, the vision through the front windscreen here really is very, very good. Um, the, the bow isn't sort of impeding your, your vision ahead, and you've got great vision to either side as well, so that's really great. Here we are in the master cabin. I guess you'd use this as the master cabin. It's probably the most salubrious of all of the cabins here. Now you wouldn't see this that often. Um, we've, we've got a, a bed that's going across the beam of the boat. Uh, very often in a catamaran there isn't all that much space in the hulls here, but this one really has got plenty of room. So uh, this is a semi-island sort of berth. It's a good size, at least a queen. Uh, you've got lots of storage to either side. Plenty of headroom here, a great big picture window on this side and there's also a sliding uh, or an opening port for a bit of ventilation. I noticed that all of the cabins have fans as well which would be handy in the summertime. The ensuite bathroom is here off the, off the main cabin and at the end towards the bow there is a separate uh, heads, uh, all shut away nice and out of sight and all the rest of it. It's, uh, it has a bit of ventilation as well which is good. Um, the shower is a pretty good size, although it's reasonably narrow, the, the space, it is nice and deep, which is, um, you know, there's going to be plenty of room in there and easy, easy to get in and out of as well. So a somewhat different layout on the, on the port hull. Maybe you'd call this the, the guest hull. Uh, we've got a good size double bed again here in the, in the cabin. Um, not quite as much room to get around the bed, but still pretty easy to make and pretty easy to get on and off. So the second guest cabin, again it's equipped with a, with a double mattress, it's a slightly unusual shape because of the way the hull uh, tapers up towards the bow, but plenty of room for a couple, uh, be a great place to, to put the kids, if you have got kids on board I'm sure they'd love having this cabin to themselves. Again it's got a, a full height uh, hanging locker which is great and there's storage under the beds as well. Between the two cabins and the port hull is, is the day head. It's reasonably compact, particularly the shower, that's not especially large, but uh, it is a separate shower cabinet. Uh, and this of course is shared between these two cabins. I'm speaking with Chris Jaynes from Ownership. Chris, this is the latest addition to the Ownership fleet. What is it about this particular vessel that, that you think is really going to appeal to your customers? Um, what we were looking for is we wanted something that gave us a stable platform. Um, we wanted something that was going to be user friendly, so nice and easy for docking. And the biggest thing was sort of getting a full size width master cabin for, for one of the purchases. It seems to me to have a huge amount of space for a boat of 40 feet. It's an incredible amount of space um, and if you compare it to the um, MY44 there's not a lot of difference. No. Um, and you sort of go well hey an MY40 it fits on a um, smaller marina berth. There's, there's a ton of room for entertaining. Uh, it's just worked out to be the perfect boat for us. Now you've up the engines as well, is that right? Yes, we decided to obviously bigger engines, um, not because we wanted to go faster, it just, you'd, you seem to find that you get better performance and better fuel economy with a slightly bigger engine and it's not working as hard on the, uh, on the motors, which is a, a big factor. So in terms of performance, a boat like this, it's sort of, uh, it's kind of a semi-displacement hull, I guess. 
it is a semi-displacement hull, yeah, so um, semi-displacement, you, um, you can cruise at anything from 15 knots to 20 knots very, very comfortably. Um, if you want to back it right back, the boat's nice and stable at 8 knots as well. And I guess the fuel burn is also pretty decent. Fuel burn is actually exceptional, like full speed, I think we were sitting on about 150 litres an hour. You know, for a 40 foot boat doing 22, 23 knots, yeah. um, that's, a, that's a pretty good economy. So it's a pretty comfortable place to be. I can understand why uh, this particular model is uh, doing so well in the, in the European market. I'm fairly sure it's going to be very popular here as well. Now, ownership have, uh, have plans to bring in perhaps another one of these, or maybe an MY44, but whoever picks up the last quarter share of this vessel is certainly going to enjoy the space, the stability, and just the versatility of a vessel like this. You can travel almost anywhere, at a good pace, very, very comfortably, and when it's time to drop the pick and enjoy the sunshine, well, you've got plenty of space to do that as well. John Ackleson from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel. <laughs>